I'll take you back again to the labs because you mentioned the labs again. Yes, there are major about... questions around, you know, that is for a role in, in terms of importation. Uh, but in terms of, you know, NAFDAQ's role locally in terms yes. of facilitating small businesses, some business owners, you know, take objection to NAFDAQ's role. They think that the process to be able to register a product, you know, is laborious and, you know, involves too many delays and it can be in some instances expensive. It is not entirely so. Um, even globally, uh, with the uh, regulatory agencies of even international committee, there's a policy in place that you should try within 90 to 180 days. And that's within three to six months to ensure registration of any product that you regulate. But however, we have to be mindful of the fact that when people are submitting either the hard copy or the soft copy through the E, mm. more often than not, we have a checklist. The checklist is not totally ad adhered to. And you issue a CD to say provide additional information. And for as long as the total documents are not in place. We cannot begin to count the 90 to 180 days. So when people want to register, they don't have adequate information to support the activity that they want to go into with NAFDAQ. So it's unless all those things are complete, then we begin to count the 90 days. Okay. Well, you, you understand that you held this, uh, there was a report you had where 91.1% of tomato paste or products in this country are fake and substandard. What happened to that? That, that did, was done by NAFDA, wasn't it? That we, 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 yes, we did um, an analysis. We carried out um, lab analysis of tomato paste, but there was no report that we had 91.1% as fake. What, we what didn't was? say they were fake. The issue is in terms of the content of the tomato paste or tomato puree. There are two classes. When you have tomato paste, it says 28% of the tomato concentrate. When you have tomato paste, it says below 24. That is just it. It is not that they are fake. Is this, are, is this not standard? It is not substandard. But it doesn't meet the required standard. It, is, it doesn't meet, on one hand, it means the required standard of tomato paste. On one hand, it means the requirements of tomato puree. So it's just in terms of the nomenclature. And that's why we now said, look, let's go back to it and do a confirmatory test. Agree that one is tomato paste, one is tomato puree, and this is the level. You have the lowest, the tolerance, the lowest mini, the, the minimum uh, level of the concentrate that should be there. Once the minimum level is met, then you are good to go. But we understand that NAPDAC was doing some mop-up in uh, Lagos, Ibadan, Abuja, and some other states, and then stopped. We didn't. It's not a mop-up. It wasn't not, a mop-up. It wasn't. We are just, like right now, we are doing a sampling, not a mop-up. We are picking samples from specific states okay. just, to uh, carry out analysis in our lab. The, you've, You've consistently talked about your laboratories, your testing and all. About eight or nine months ago, there was an EU delegation that came into the country and one of your labs failed the test. Is that true? No. What happened? No. The EU delegate came and visited our Oshodi lab, uh, the pesticide residue lab that has the ISO 17025 accreditation and to actually ascertain whether we have the capacity and capability to do pesticide residue test. I must confess to you that the EU delegate was quite satisfied with that pesticide residue lab. Not many of such labs are that accredited in Nigeria. And lab that has that one that is accredited. And that's why for exports, that lab analyzes and issues the E certificate health for products that are going out of Nigeria. Mm. Okay, but is, would, if the EU delegation is happy with the Oshid lab, what about your central drug control lab in Yaba? <laughs> Thank you. supposed to be getting a WHO 
certification yes. what's happening we it's a, it's a, it entails quite a number of things and we have been on this for quite a while and we are almost at the verge of getting WHO pre-qualification or accreditation of that lab. We are retooling the lab and it entails us having new equipment. Even the equipment that are there now are functional. We can make do with additional. And there are other systems that have to be in place before we can get the WHO accreditation. Right now we have the consultants working with us, even from um, Part 2, from DFID. We have our staff that have been trained and constantly going through the necessary training. And then we have even the reporting system that has to be fine-tuned to be in conformity with what happens in um, any WHO accredited lab. Mm. And we need support, no doubt about it. You need support, you need we, staff, but we, you, we need, you, you, you reject couples that have been posted to no, NAFTA. No, we, we do not. NAFTA is one organization that engages a lot of couples. As I sit with you, in my system, I will have nationwide at least, at least 250 couples. Remember, NAVDAC is... That's different from the 2,000 staff, yeah. But, but, but apart, from, apart from the 2,000 staff, we have the coppers. We also have the intern pharmacists. The intern pharmacists have something called mandatory one-year service. And NAVDAC engages intern pharmacists. NAVDAC also uses um, IT students from the universities. The IT students that are in, are in the field of chemistry, microbiology, um, food science and technology, where they come in for three months or six months as the case may be. So all of us join hands together in as much as those ones have come to gain, acquire knowledge and experience, we still use them. Okay, let me bring this in before we wrap up. Why are these three companies, uh, Savannah Farms, Dangote Farms, Serisco Foods, they were all present at that here. Why are they all saying that NAVDAC is not helping them out to ensure that their products survive in the country. Um, you see, when it comes to uh, manufacturing of a NAVDAC regulated product, we should shy away from um, restricting such manufacture to a few people. Nigeria is a large market and therefore we should encourage both local manufacturing if the local manufacturing can meet with the need of the Nigerians we are good to go can, can, but can't it at the moment for tomorrow at the moment we cannot at the moment we cannot we cannot but why do they say With, they can I have not seen it that they we can we will graduate into that let me tell you something it is not peculiar to tomato paste alone. The policy we have in place in NAVDAC is such that when we grant you a marketing authorization for the first time, the validity is for five years. Then you can go for another renewal for five years. The next time around, we encourage you to bring the technology into Nigeria. One, you're going to create employment. Two, you're also going to boost our economy. And this is what we are all about. And so the more the merrier. So when we flood with the market, with the good quality NAVDAC regulated product, there's no how it will not bring down the price. And the product becomes affordable to everybody. And with NAVDAC there, we are going to assure and ensure the quality, the safety, the wholesomeness, the efficacy of that regulated product. All right, Mrs. Yichindoni, Acting Director General of NAVDAC, thank you for coming out this morning. My pleasure.